Hi everyone, Joe Fernandez here, and today I'll be going over Fury Warrior gameplay, specifically on how to utilize Thirst for Battle properly. This honor talent is taken pretty much all the time as a Fury Warrior, as it is absurdly powerful. Even though it's almost effortless to keep up this buff, I often see Fury Warriors not utilizing it to its maximum potential. This video will go over exactly how to make sure you use the most out of it. The main reason why this talent is picked is due to increasing a Fury Warrior's mobility, allowing us to easily connect to our targets. With such a low cooldown on this snare removal, as well as its speed buff of 15%, it makes it very easy to use, but also very easy to not take advantage of the buff. During the duration of the buff, you will be immune to any snares in the game, so using this to your advantage could make you catch up to your targets without the need of using other mobility cooldowns such as Charge or Heroic Leap. Here is an example where a mage is quite far away from me and most warriors may warrant the use of Charge here. Instead, I use my Bloodthirst on the Priest to proc Thirst for Battle and during the speed buff and Piercing Howl, get back onto the mage and save the cooldown of my Charge. Doing this to save mobility cooldowns is very important, as then you can have Charge or Heroic Leap for Blinks or whenever an enemy uses other mobility cooldowns to kite you. As you can see, it's easy to do yet very effective, making you very mobile and making it very difficult to get yourself kited. Even though most people use it well for mobility, it can also be very powerful when used for kiting. Using it for kiting is crucial when dealing with big offensive cooldowns from the enemy team, or simply against most melee DPSs if needing to survive. The reason why it's so good against melee is you can simply kite them with the use of Thirst for Battle in conjunction with Piercing Howl. A simple Bloodthirst into Piercing Howl whilst running away from most melee will kite them, allowing you to stop taking damage and make it difficult for them to connect. In this example, we can see a rat using his mini wings on me, which causes me to instantly Bloodthirst into Piercing Howl allowing me to kite it for the remainder of its duration. Doing this saves the usage of my main defensive cooldown and also gives my healer a much easier time. If I don't take damage, then he has nothing to heal. It's incredibly powerful against two melee that have trouble hitting you. For instance, Turbo. You can kite a Turbo Cleave at will as Fury with the use of Bloodthirst into Piercing Cow. However, this doesn't make you invincible. You still need to be careful when the enemy team has stuns as this will stop you from kiting and allow the enemy team to pressure you. Outside of that, you can kite them with ease and make it a pain for them to target you. Here is a great example against the Turbo Cleave. Whilst I'm pressuring the monk, the enemy warrior charges me, which I simply kite with the use of Bloodthirst and Piercing Howl. I also reconnect to the monk without the use of charge and force the warrior to Heroic Leap which gets instantly kited again. However, I get put into a Storm Bolt which drops me dangerously low, forcing me to leap away. Although, as you can see, as soon as the stun is gone, I can kite away easily once again, especially with the knowledge that the warrior has no more mobility cooldowns for me. Here's another example where my Shaman gets put into a long CC chain during the time a Retribution Paladin is pressuring me. After the enemy rogue saps my Shaman and the rat pops his wings, I immediately kite them, gaining distance from the rat and not even getting touched by the rogue, not using any of my team's defensive cooldowns and barely dropping below 80% HP. Abusing your kiting ability can render the enemy melee useless in their pursuit to try to kill you. This not only makes it comfortable for your team to deal with, but it can also tilt your enemies which in turn can force them to play sloppy. You shouldn't rely on that to win, but it's always nice to reap the benefits of your own spec or class in that regard. Against this turbo cleave, as you can see, my constant kiting made it extremely difficult for them to kill me, as well as forcing a mistake from the warrior. He kept trying to pressure me, wasting his blade stun whilst I was kiting, then getting aggressive on me with no trinket and in battle stance. So I immediately counter pressure the warrior with a stun on my own, and a lot of pressure, forcing both Dire by the Sword 
and Cocoon from the Mistweaver. So now we've talked about the two main uses for Thirst for Battle. That is, utilizing it for mobility to keep onto your kill targets better, and using it to kite most melee specs in order to avoid taking unnecessary damage. What if I told you, you can do both of these at the same time? It sounds overpowered against some things, yet it's totally possible, especially against the melee specs, that you can kite. You basically just take both concepts of what has been taught whilst training one target and kiting the other melee. Doing this will allow you to continue getting pressure on your main target whilst relieving yourself of the enemy's damage. We'll go through multiple examples of this so you can see how useful it is. Against Rogue Mage, this can be incredible. Whilst tunneling the mage, if a rogue wants to train me, I can simply use my Thirst for Battle and Piercing Howl to kite them whilst I train a mage whom tries to kite me. In this clip, I reach up to the mage after blink with the use of Thirst for Battle, whilst also kiting the rogue, kiting his pressure and being able to force an ice block through pain suppression with the help of my Shadow Priest CC. As you can see here, not only did I kite damage with Thirst for Battle, but I also forced an ice block, giving us an incredibly huge advantage early on in this game. Turbo Cleave or most Medicleaves Cleaves are also very good for this when gunning down the enemy healer. Here I pursue the monk and instantly snaring both melee, rendering them useless during this time as well as reaching the monk and creating pressure. Doing this against any melee team whilst you crush another target on their team is a great way at sustaining yourself and slaying your opponents. That's all for this easy yet devastating aspect of using Thirst for Battle to its full potential. As always, plus skill this guide if it helped and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching.